All right, I think we've got enough people in here. I'm just gonna get going. Um, so we're continuing with these these monthly themes. We got good feedback on that, so we're gonna do that going forward. And um, we got good feedback on topics that that uh, you guys would like us to address. And uh, we got a lot of requests for kind of sharing the playbook, right? For reaching out um, across multiple channels. Really, what does the the top of the funnel outreach look like? across multiple channels. How do you set that up? How do you automate that? So that's what we'll be spending our, our month on, right? So February is gonna be focused on multi-channel outreach. Um, and again, that's based on um, the feedback that we've gotten over the past month uh, as we've been trying to focus on themes. So if you don't like this theme, if it's not relevant, just tune out and, and pop back in next month um, if you do like this, uh, congratulations, it's because you gave us feedback and that's why we're doing it. So again, the, the topic here is always based on your feedback. You guys get to shape this thing. Um, we've always said that we're not going to continue this if, if people aren't finding it valuable. Um, you, that seems to be, seems to be valuable so far. So we're just going to keep doing it. Um, and I really do like this monthly theme thing because it allows me to go deeper on, um, a new topic each month. And I think, um, yeah, you know, it's a better experience if we can focus on really giving you actionable, implement implementable um, skills by the end of the month. That's that's going to be uh, what we're focused on. So today um, we're really just going to run through the overview. What is multi-channel outreach? Why are we doing this this month? And then the next three weeks, that's going to be the the meat and potatoes, right? So that's where we'll focus on um, real samples from our playbook, what we've used that works, what we see not working, the tools, right? What are the, the websites and the tools and, and what we're actually using for our integrations and our outreach. And um, that's gonna be February 17th. And then we'll close out the month with just tips and tactics based on all of that, right? So once we give you the playbook, once we give you the tools, then we're gonna give you the implementation tips and off you go, that'll be the end of the month. So today, um, overview of the month, overview of what we do. Um, if you are new to this lunch and learn, I'm Adam. I run BN Digital. I run BizNexus. BN Digital is what we really cover here. That's our off-market um, agency for um, for deal flow. Really, all we do is social selling for intermediaries and private equity, family office, everyone in business acquisition and sale. That's our wheelhouse. That's that's what we focus on there. Um, BizNexus. That's our platform for on market um, intermediary back deal flow. So it's a matching platform. So between those two offerings, we aim to cover all of your deal origination. That's what we're trying to improve on month in, month out. Um, the point of everything that we cover during these webinars, during the social selling lessons is just to, to build a network of your end target prospects, your business owners over time. Now, if you're a searcher and you have a, a limited acquisition search period, um, some of some of the the long game issues might not be as relevant for you if you're really just in this for a year two years because you're trying to lend one acquisition and convert over to an operating role but it still should be highly relevant for you if you're an intermediary and you're looking for multiple engagements over time this is um, this is a very valuable process to follow and we're trying to show you how to get in front of your end target prospects the business owners either in your geographic area or in your particular niche whether that's you know HVAC or SaaS or ecom whatever it may be not only get in front of the business owners um, who could be engagements for you going forward whether that's now two years from now five years from now but also the niche consultants and the referral prospects who are going to help deliver those business owners on an ongoing basis Right. So who are the financial advisors, the accountants, the lawyers, the niche consultants, or if you are a searcher and you're going after an acquisition, who are the business brokers who are the intermediaries who can help connect you with your deal flow on an ongoing basis? And how do you um, actually establish a real relationship with them? Right. That's been a real problem that we've seen is brokers getting spammed by by searchers. So hopefully we have some tips for that along the way. Um, the five stages of social selling as we see it. This really just is indicative of the fact that we see deal origination as a long-term play. It starts with optimizing your profile for your end target prospect. If you're trying to acquire an HVAC company, your website and your LinkedIn profile and all of your marketing assets should speak directly to the pain points of that you know, HVAC business owner. Your targeting, getting very specific with your targeting and your data. 
Um, we talk about that all the time because that still is one of the biggest mistakes that we see on a regular basis, right? If you don't nail your targeting, if you don't have your data from the get-go, then you're gonna waste a lot of time um, downstream. So nailing your targeting, not only for your end prospects, but for your referral prospects, and then starting the process of building campaigns, hyper-specific campaigns for each prospect, nurturing those prospects over time, because you know they're probably not gonna be ready at first pass, and then setting up the automated tasks that you can capture um, their interest at the time that they're they're actually ready for it, right? So that's that's the point of all of this is getting that sit down, getting them to you know, get on a Zoom, get on a phone call, go get a cup of coffee with you, whatever that is for you, getting the sit down, getting that proverbial cup of coffee when they're ready to actually have a conversation about their business valuation, their exit plans, um, whatever that, that may be. Um, so we always go through a few key updates. Today's quick. Um, if you're a client of ours, you know that we're, we're doing a lot of multi-channel these days. Um, you know, that's great because we'll be able to share some things from our own playbook as, as well as what we've been seeing um, people in the industry doing well, doing badly. Um, so if you haven't checked out what we're doing across snail mail, LinkedIn, email, and phone, um, definitely please do so. And our nurture funnel, that's been great. We're backlogged on that. So we're not taking anybody new until probably close to the end of Q2. We'll see, um, see how that goes, but we are, we are backed up there. We've had to staff up to, to get people um, to, to be able to help with the, the onboarding and the management of that. Um, and then our platform update update, that's, that's coming later in February. So we've been working on a big, big update for BizNexus. And we've been talking about that and target date is February 15th, but I'm just gonna say, the end of the month because dev is dev. Um, how to access our services, you can go to businessnexus.com or bn.digital for the, the lead generation for the prospecting. So this month, um, this is actually the wrong slide. We have not updated that. This should be um, at targeting and building, right? So we'll fix this, for, fix this for next week. We are doing multi-channel outreach, how to leverage that, how to set up that process. That process. And we really wanna make sure that we're giving you um, implementable um, tips, right? So this, we want to focus on value. We really want you to walk away from this month knowing why you're doing this, how to set it up, what tools are, are working, and um, you know what you should be looking out for on an ongoing basis as you're running a multi-channel campaign for, for deal origination. So why multi-channel? We have a wide variety of people on the lunch and learn these days. So um, that's, it's really interesting. It's great, but it might make this a little more difficult or challenging for us going forward because we have marketers who are just getting into the world of business acquisition and sale. And um, then we have intermediaries who are really just taking their first crack at you know, digital marketing, multi-channel. So feedback always helps. So with a topic like this, as we covered this month, if you're on the, if you're on the webinar, if you don't mind, when you get the question um, at the end of this webinar, they, you know, asking for your feedback, please, please give that to us because we do want to make sure that we're we're hitting the right points. If we need to be more specific, we can definitely get more specific over the course of the month. If it's too specific and you want us to zip back up to thirty thousand feet, let us know because we can do that as well, right? I want to design these things over the course of the month based on your feedback. So, why multi-channel? Why are we doing that this month? If you've been on these webinars, you've heard me say over and over and over again that in this industry, you have to assume that 99% of your prospects are simply not going to be ready to have a discussion about anything related to business value, their exit plans on first approach. They don't know who you are. They don't know anything about your social proof. Um, it's a very noisy world out there, especially in, you know, the, on the interweb. You've got, um, you have a lot of activity. You have a, a lot of noise, especially in, in a COVID world. So Multi-channel um, is something that everybody absolutely should be doing. If you're not doing it, some of the main benefits, first, it helps you expand your reach, right? Especially if you're, um, you know, if you're a regional brick and mortar broker and you're focused on main street businesses in your local area, you know, your, your business owners might not be on LinkedIn. They might be somewhere else, right? They might be on email. They might be in, you know, local trade publication. Um, you don't know where your end prospect is. So you want to make sure that you're expanding your reach and ideally hitting them on their own preferred channel, um, wherever that may be. Uh, Multi-channel is a great way to nurture your prospects, right? So if you know that 99% of them are not gonna be ready for your 
value proposition at first swing, you have to have a system in place for staying in touch with them, right? And last month we covered sales follow-up. So if you wanna go through that, all of those are on our site. Um, we're not gonna be going through sales follow-up, but multi-channel is very important for that as well. Um, if you haven't heard of the rule of seven, it's really much more than that these days. You have to touch your prospect at least seven times across multiple channels um, to make sure that they, um, you know, that, that you can stay top of mind with them. In business acquisition and sale, this is much more so, right? This is, um, you're, you're talking about once in a lifetime transaction for a business owner, maybe something they've been building for 30 plus years. You need to build trust. You need to you know, make sure that they understand you are a qualified authority in your space. Um, that's extremely important um, in, in, in deal origination if you're gonna be doing this you know, over the long term, right? If you're not looking for a business owner who has to sell because of life considerations in this moment, because of health reasons, or because you know their business isn't doing so well in a COVID environment, so they have to let it go. That, I mean, that's that's going to happen, but that's that's not you know that's not the the norm, right? I mean that that is that's a one off. If you if you get you know five percent of people who are ready to have that conversation and really entertain a, a real conversation about selling their business. They're not just testing the waters or kicking the tires to see if you can get a, if they can get a free business valuation. Um, you need to be touching these prospects over time. And general rule um, combined channels are just much more effective if you have a process in place. So typical mistakes that we see in this industry when it comes to multi-channel, um, first and foremost, disjointed marketing efforts. Right. If you're using multiple vendors for your marketing efforts, you should have a team huddle up and make sure that everything is coordinated. Um, you know, again, for us, we we preach start with data. Right. Make sure that you have a prospect list that will have address and email and phone and social URLs, so that before you take your first step, you know that you can touch these prospects in an automated fashion across multiple channels. Right. Um, very very important. And if you're using one vendor for email and one vendor for phone and one vendor for social, it's my recommendation that you make sure that they're all talking to each other so that you can actually have a coordinated effort. Um, nine times out of 10, the people who we see coming in to speak with us do not have that in place. And that's a, that's a big miss. Um, for searchers out there, we see um, for, for brokers, this is I'm sure any brokers on the call have, have gotten these if, if they're not getting it daily, but the blast emails from um, searchers, from people who are interested in business acquisition, just getting a list of brokers and emailing them and then setting up a, a time-based drip to email them once a month with no call, you know, nothing to help establish your qualifications, um, that, that doesn't work, right? So a multi-channel campaign in that regard, actually reaching out to connect with a broker and establish a relationship, that's gonna be much more productive if you're looking for a river guide who's gonna think of you and actually put you in touch with deals that make sense. Um, so that's, that's a mistake that we're seeing a lot of and hearing a lot of complaints from the brokerage world on that one. Um, and then you know, the, the second biggest mistake that we see is just no nurturing, right? Especially, with intermediaries, for whatever reason, you want to just do the outreach, but you know, you, you just don't you don't have a system in place for nurturing, for staying in front of these prospects, which is crazy because and that's ninety five percent of the people you're approaching, right? You're going to have to stay in front of them. Um, so if you don't have a system in place for that, that is across multiple channels, that's that's a miss. So when we're talking about multi channel, really, what is that? A sample campaign with seller outreach, right? We're not gonna talk, touch on, on referral prospects today. Uh, this is just an overview, but with seller outreach, it should look something like, you know, if you have a, a flyer going out, if you're doing that, um, you, that, there's not gonna be any data to track, right? So you'll send the flyer and then maybe the next week you send an email, right? And you reference the flyer you know, a, a week after the, the flyer lands, not after you mail it, right? So after the flyer lands, you'll send an email a week later reference the flyer, state your value proposition, and then you follow up with a call, right? And then you can have a social touch. So you can have you know, LinkedIn, you can pull them into your network. Then maybe you, you wait, you get some posting and engagement. So they can see you posting on an ongoing basis. Your posting is designed to establish you as a qualified authority in your niche. So they're seeing that, you're, you know, you're proving 
you're proving your qualifications and you're reinforcing. And then ideally you get them into your newsletter, which will go out at least once a month. Um, and that will go out to your network of business owners and, and ideally referral prospects. Um, and then you'll have a strategic email um, which is designed for conversion because you know that all of these automated activities have been helping to move them down the funnel, have been helping to familiarize your prospect with who you are and what you do and um, you know, et cetera. Then maybe you have you know, a LinkedIn message offering um, something valuable, right? So if you're pursuing an HVAC company, you have you know, exit tips for an HVAC company or what buyers are looking for um, when they're assessing the valuation of an HVAC company, something that's genuinely helpful. LinkedIn is a great platform for, for value, not selling, not closing. So if you offer something value on LinkedIn and then you follow up on email with you know, a more closey, do we want to get a meeting email, um, followed by a call based on data, it, this is just a very general example of what a multi-channel campaign will, will look like. But the key here is that every subsequent stage is based on the data from, from previous stages. So you know, that, that last call, you know, point 10, where we're saying use data, you should be able to see everything, like the entire life of your prospect, the entire life of your leads. You should be able to see what posts have they actually engaged with over time. Did they get the snail mail flyer? If you sent out an email, did they open it? Did they open it four times? Did they open it twice, right? Um, ideally, you have sales tasks that are based on engagement. So if somebody did actually open up a, a sell your business email four times, a sales task was definitely created for that. Um, so that, that part is automated. We'll show you how to do that with outreach. Um, some fundamentals, just making sure that the steps that we set up, again, we're going through this this month. So we're just, we're just um, setting the scene here for, for what's to come, but you wanna make sure that each step is um, repeatable and um, you know, that you can have automated time-based tasks, right? So you know, if, a, if a periodic snail mail, right? If you have a snail mail that goes out each quarter. So if you're a franchise broker, for example, and your franchise is sending out a, a flyer for you to your prospects once a quarter, then you know, that should be based on a specific, you know, specific targeting criteria that you've established with your franchise, right? So that should be followed up by automatic and manual emails, right? So some emails can be just automatic, but once you've been touching a prospect for a while and, and you know, you're further down the funnel, you should have a task to send an email and it should be a highly customized email, not, not automated. Again, we're gonna show you how to do that. Um, you know, call tasks based on engagement. That's what I just went through. You wanna make sure that anybody through your multi channel campaign, if they're engaging with your content, if they're engaging with your outreach um, and that's trackable that you get a sales task based on, you know, based on that engagement. So if you've nailed your targeting and everyone who's entered into a multi-channel campaign is a qualified HVAC owner, if they're engaging with your content, you have to know that and you have to set up the right sales task to make sure that you are um, notified and you can get them while they're actually interested. Social touches will be crossing, you know, will be, um, covering how that works in a multi-channel campaign. Um, it's different in business acquisition and sale. Digital marketers will typically recommend um, social engagement that more often than not just doesn't work in business acquisition and sale, but there are tactics um, to, specifically with LinkedIn mostly, right? That's really what we care about when we talk about business acquisition and sale. There are tactics that, that do work that are really effective um, for establishing yourself as a qualified authority on this platform. So we'll be running through that. And meeting scheduling, if you don't have Calendly or some sort of tool, uh, you should, and we'll show you how to, how to leverage that this month. So um, the last real theme that I'll, I'll cover today that we'll be touching on in February is just making sure that you're staying up with these effective tools, right? These tools and these channels are changing so quickly. Um, you know, it's our, our job, we have, we have the luxury of staying up on this, um, it's, it's great. It's just, you know, we, we sign up to pretty much every tool and we try it and we, you know, we're, we're listening to, for, for feedback and, um, you know, we get to, to try these things as they pop up, but it, it gets harder and harder to do that, right? To stay on the front edge because these things 
are popping up very quickly. You have you know, just an entire generation that's interested in entrepreneurship. So when it comes to email tools or social tools or cross-channel tools, there are a lot out there. And um, the UI is getting better and better. So in terms of usability, these things are, are becoming more accessible. And um, same thing with channels, right? So there can be some channels out there that maybe seem appealing, but they wind up being a huge time waster, right? Maybe you get a lot of engagement, but is that aligned with your overall goal of acquiring a business or is it just a time waster? So it's a changing landscape that's not gonna change, but in terms of staying up with these tools, staying up with the channels and the, the sources and the groups that can help you do that, we'll cover that as well. So. That's pretty much the overview for today, what we're going to be getting into. Again, next week, we're going to give specific samples from the playbook, right? We're going to show you exactly what works with multi-channel sequences, multi-channel campaigns. You'll be able to walk away with that. We're going to have downloadable samples that we send out to every attendee. Um, on February 17th, we're going to go through the specific tools that we like, um, some of the popular ones that maybe we don't like so much and, and why. And then we're going to end the month with tips and tactics um, based on all of the above. So tips based on the playbook, we gave you tips based on the tools, how to tie it all together and run with it um, at the end of the month. So that's, that's what we're getting into guys. This is the new format. Um, this was the, the overview. So let's just say it's safe to say this is the least valuable um, session in the February series that you'll have. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, you know, we'll see you next week and, and excited to get into it this month. Thanks guys.